When I was here training, we would come here almost every long run. So there's photos of you guys up inside? Yep. There's a picture of us standing right here, actually, with our uh, national championship trophy. I had kind of the option between taking the path of professional running or going right off to school again. I can't give up on my dream of becoming a physician. I'd rather work harder and get to do both than have to give up one and have to wonder what, what could have been. It's important for Syracuse that we have all these groups because of the winter. You know, we still had probably 100 or so people and it was, you know, negative degree wind chills. I've always believed that if you really want to do something bad enough, there's always enough time in a day to get it done. Usually it just means waking up a little earlier. Since around eighth grade is when I really decided I want to become a doctor. And I mean, I come from a family of nurses, like my mom's a nurse, I, I watch her go work a night shift you know, three or four nights a week, and so that was a big influence for me growing up. And so, in high school, it was all about, you know, taking the AP bio and then running well so I can get into a good school. I got into a few colleges, including, you know, Syracuse, Harvard, and in the end, I chose Syracuse. There was just something when I came on my visit, I visited Coach Fox and Coach Bell, and they showed me around campus, and I got to meet the guys and just see what the program was all about and they had a brand new life sciences building like you know where I'd be spending all my time as a bio major and it really just resonated with me on all fronts and it wasn't the most popular decision for among some people to like you know pass up on like an Ivy League school but uh, getting to look back on it now um, I had the opportunity to run on a national championship team that you know started in in the teens at nationals just scraping to get in and you know working our way all the way to the podium in addition to getting all my pre-med courses out of the way and I got into four or five medical schools by the end of my time in Syracuse and I achieved all my goals and you know I couldn't ask for anything more than that. Ultimately I decided to put medical school on hold and take up coach Ben Rosario and NAZ Elite on the opportunity to go out to Flagstaff, Arizona and test myself against the country and world's best runners. With the support of Coach Ben, the team, Hoka, I started medical school um, you know, over a couple months in. I started out training in Philly and I'm still running for my team. I'm still representing a great brand and you know, at this point, I've, I've gotten in a couple races. I opened up at the Rock and Roll Philly Half Marathon, which I thought was awesome. Got to stay in my new hometown. You know, I, I played second there. I got eighth at the U.S. 10 Mile Championships a few weeks ago. So, you know, I think like, it was a big test for myself that, like, I can, I can do both. I can still train at a high elite level and, uh, you know, also meet my requirements that school puts on me as well. I'm back on the East Coast now and it's great because it gives me the, the opportunity to come back to Syracuse, kind of where I really got going in the running world and uh, get to come hang out with the team, see my coaches, my old coaches and, uh, and get to run on these awesome trails that I've, I've really missed them. So it was great to even get out there today and get 18 miles in my old stomping grounds. So Green Lakes is a great long run spot. I mean, when I was here training, we would come here almost every long run, but we also had a great post long run spot. And that's our favorite breakfast joint out in East Syracuse at Mother's Cupboard. They became our family there and kept us fueled up all the way to the top. As I was in school, especially like the longer we were here, the more we ended up at Mother's and uh, they really just like kind of took us in. They love us, we love them. We're in a lot today. 
you talk about them kind of embracing the team and your success. So there's photos of you guys up inside. Yep, they uh, they were nice enough to frame a couple pictures, like our cross country poster from that year. And there's a picture of us standing right here, actually, with our uh, national championship trophy. You know, like anytime we won a trophy, like whether it was an ACC trophy, like our rings, when we got our rings, first place, first thought we would make is mothers. You brought like, the trophy yeah. in. Oh man, we would bring. The ACC trophy is actually like the biggest trophy we've ever gotten. Like, it's bigger than the national championship trophy. But both of them, we brought in. That guy gets his own seat. Man, he's the the guest of honor. And they have a food challenge too, right? Yeah. So they were actually on man versus food. It's a six pound frittata challenge. I tried it once when I was a dumb freshman, and like, I made it like maybe two thirds, maybe. That's kind of like their claim to fame. I mean, I'm more partial to the foot wide pancakes myself. My name is Michelle Machieski, and I live in Marcellus, New York, which is a little village just outside of the city of Syracuse. Baltimore Woods is probably my favorite trails in the area. Uh, it's all very natural trail system. They don't do a whole lot of grooming on it, um, but yeah, it's really hilly. There's like a ton of roots. There was a researcher named Mildred Faust that used to live and did a lot of her research here. They named the trails after that and they have all these cool plaques around to explain different vegetation. So my daughter was born November 22nd of 2013 and it really changed my lifestyle. I wasn't planning on having my life flow that way. It was really tough for me to balance out work, finishing school, and when I had my daughter, you know, making sure I could take care of her. So I made a promise to myself that I was going to you know, put her first, but also make sure to take care of myself. So I think it was probably New Year's Day. She was taking a nap, so I went online and I was just Googling races. And I found this one called Sega Hunda, which is a trail marathon in Letchworth State Park, just west of Syracuse. So like after being pregnant and carrying that weight and you know, it, it was really hard in labor. I feel like nothing is that hard. So I thought, you know what, forget it. Like if I can, you know, make it through this, I'm just gonna sign up for this race. So I did like really spur of the moment. And it was almost six months to the date that the race happened. And my daughter was there waiting for me. Um, it was the greatest feeling ever. And people on the trail were like, what, you had a baby six months ago? This is crazy, you know? Um, so I got a lot of slaps on the back for that. Running for me is, there's nothing that compares to running. No matter what, it's you know me pushing myself. I'm not doing running for anybody else. Nobody's making me do it. Nobody's depending on me to do it. It's not always a good day, like by any means. Some days it just sucks to run. But when you're out there and you're in nature, it's quiet, you can think, nobody's demanding anything from you. So it's just peaceful. I joined the track club in town, the Syracuse Track Club. I started to run with other girls who were fairly fast, doing long runs, and um, I won this marathon in May of last year. You know, just ran a killer race, I won, which was just crazy, like who can say that they won a marathon? Um, I try to include my daughter a lot too in the running. My big thing is I want to be a good role model for her. And she loves watching me run, she, you know, runs herself, and she loves it, she laughs and everything. Um, so for me, I'm just going to keep doing it to show her that, you know, women can really be very strong and independent and, you know, make something of themselves. So the Syracuse running scene, um, it, there's actually quite a few different groups. I also run with the Fleet Feet Distance Program, which has around 200 people, which is just incredible, that show up every week. So I think, you know, it's important for Syracuse that we have all these groups because of the winter. It really helps to know that there is this group of people that's gonna be out there with you running, so you can kind of all be miserable together. Syracuse gets a lot of flack for being known as like a really snowy, harsh place in the winter. But it's really not what people think it is. Um, 
Yeah, like there, there'd be some cold runs. You just learn how to bundle up, make sure you're, you're, you're breaking even on the warmth going out and the warmth you're making on the run. You get really good gloves and hats and coats and shoes and reflective gear and you just kind of, yeah, you congregate and you go. At the very least, I know Coach Bell will say this, uh, I mean, it, it makes us tough. It, it, I mean, it definitely made us tough and really not complain about some of the other things we were doing. The school and the city does a pretty good job plowing. I mean, they're out there at all hours of the night even getting it ready for the morning. So that made it easy to really always be able to get runs in outside. But on, on the flip side, I mean, we have Manly Fieldhouse. We have a great indoor track, six laps to a mile. So it's even bigger than a normal indoor track. And we could really get going in there for some great workouts. I pride myself on the days when I go out and I'm running and there's nobody out there except for snow plows. And even the snow plows like roll their windows down, they're like, get out of the road. I just think it's so funny. You know, if you have the right equipment, you can really kind of get yourself going anytime.